Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing what I'm sure will be a very controversial video, and that is the one that I've been talking about for a while, which is going to be comparing terminal ballistics between a 7.5 inch barrel, an 11.5 inch barrel, and a 16 inch barrel as a control. Now in the past I have said repeatedly that a 7.5 inch barrel is not a good choice for personal defense, um, and that I said the shortest I would go is 10.3, however, the one I feel best with is an 11.5 inch barrel. My claim has always been that the terminal ballistics of seven and a half inch barrels is not satisfactory in my opinion uh, for a fight stopping round. But today we're gonna hopefully find out whether or not I've uh, been blowing a lot of uh, hot air or whether there's some validity to my claims. Which I should say, if I'm wrong, then great. I, I'm more than happy to, to go where the evidence leads us today. So what we're gonna be doing is shooting both 55 grain full metal jacket, basically the same as M193 ball ammo through each of the three uh, barrels. And then we're gonna be shooting 62 grain SS109 projectiles through all three barrels. Now, th th thankfully we have good velocity data because we're using the same loads and the same barrels that we used when I did the barrel length versus velocity video. So we already know what FPS we're looking at through all three of these. Um, the question is how does it do in ballistics gel? So I'm gonna have a gel uh, block two blocks technically at 10 yards because I figure since we're talking personal defense inside the house distances, 10 yards is about the furthest you'll probably find yourself having to use a gun indoors. So I'm gonna go ahead and shoot all six rounds, three of the 55, three of the 62 through all three of these uppers and then we'll see what our results actually are. Actually, I lied. First, what we're gonna do is introduce you to the three barrels that we're gonna be using for this test. If you wanna just skip to the shooting, go to this time code. And then if you want to go to the results and analysis, go to this time code. All right, so that'll keep everyone happy, hopefully. So first up, we have my seven and a half inch upper here. This looks a little bit different than it did in my barrel length versus velocity videos. The only thing we've changed is the front handguard here. It was the original Radical Firearms one that came with it. Um, but now we have the nine inch Timber Creek handguard on it. Now you might be thinking, well, seven and a half inches with a nine inch handguard. We have our little flash can up here, which gets it past the front. Now this is the same exact configuration of the barrel and muzzle device that we used before. So that should not in any way affect the velocity or anything like that. And then up top, we have the aero precision flip up sights, which um, if you guys have seen the update on my Instagram, the, the, the current generation, I do not currently recommend anymore simply because I've had the brackets break on both of them with the rifle just sitting in the safe. Um, so that's not a good thing, but just to let you know what's up top here. All right, you may be able to hear that the rain has picked up slightly, so I went underneath the overhang just to protect uh, the camera. Um, next up, we have the 11 and a half inch SBR here. It's a complete um, BCM upper receiver. I believe it's a Spikes Tactical BCG. Um, we have a primary arms red dot up here, but we're really going to be using these Midwest Industries combat iron sights here that I've been, been testing out. Again, everything here minus the iron sights is the exact same configuration as what was run during the um, barrel length versus velocity video. So nothing too crazy to talk about here. And then last but not least, we have the 16 inch BCM rifle here, the Recce 16. You guys have seen this in tons of videos, configured in the exact same way because I really like the way this thing is set up and it's been working well for me. Just FYI, one to six primary arms ACSS scope up here, some uh, Sidewinder backup irons from Strike Industries, got a Enforced WML, one of the first gents, still holding up, so until it breaks, I'm gonna keep running it. Uh, and then a BCM CAG down here.
So first up, let's talk about our three shots with the 55 grain uh, M193 ball ammo. Unfortunately, it got a little bit more clustered here than I would have liked. I'll try to show you good close-up pictures that I took as we went, so you can hopefully be able to differentiate these a little bit better. The middle one right here is from the 7.5 inch barrel. Then we have the 11.5 here and the 16 inch here. Now, unfortunately, the only round that stayed in the block, as you can see the projectile right here, is from the 11 and a half inch barrel. Each one of these rounds veered off to the right as it entered. So let me grab my measuring tape. So first up here, you can see the um, first shot from the seven and a half inch barrel. Looks like it went about three inches before it did actually start to tumble, which I have to admit, pretty surprised about. I did not anticipate it tumbling at all. That looks like we've got one full revolution here, which the permanent wound cavity on it was about two and a half inches, but very, very shallow, as hopefully I have a close-up picture for to, to, to show that, um, but it's almost like a flat disc. Um, and then it kind of stabilized out. We have a pretty small wound channel until it finally exited the block around uh, 17 inches or so, um, which one trend that I noticed is that it seemed like the deepest penetration for all the tests was with the seven and a half, but we'll, we'll talk about that more uh, later. Second shot from the 11 and a half inch here. Again, we went about three and a half inches into the block before it started tumbling. Now you can probably tell here that the permanent wound cavity is about twice the size of that at 11 and a half inch here, the biggest section being almost nine inches, but we got some pretty significant disturbance here and it's continued to tumble before finally coming to rest here at 16 and a half inches. Uh, and we'll go ahead and pull that bullet out and I'll show you some close up pictures of that. I just wanted to leave everything where it was uh, like when it was shot. Then lastly, over here on this other side, we have the 16 inch shot, which it went a little bit deeper, probably close to four inches before the permanent wound cavity really starts opening up. But the initial couple inches is a little bit bigger than what uh, the other two were. And then it just completely blew out the side here because unfortunately where these two were to try to get an independent, uh, distinct, distinct uh, pattern, it unfortunately was too close to the edge and exited the block. But as you can tell from that permanent wound cavity, pretty, pretty significant here. And again, it just destroyed the side of that gelatin block. So um, pretty impressive. I wish we'd have been able to see a little bit more of what it did later on, but uh, not a bad result nonetheless. So here we have the blocks and I guess just FYI, the 62 grains we shot from this direction, the 55 grains we shot from this direction. Um, so first up here in the center, we have that 55, uh, the uh, seven and a half inch barrel, which, you know, again, you'll, you'll see the close up pictures when it was the only wound channel in here. Um, but it, it's really not that big of a permanent wound cavity. And honestly, I thought of all the loads we shot, this might be the best chance for the um, for the round, honestly, it doesn't look much more significant than a than a pistol caliber as far as that permanent wound cavity goes. Um, you can reference other gel tests I've done to, to compare that. But the weird thing is it penetrated significantly deeper, and it actually exited here on the other end of the block. And hopefully, I'll be showing you a picture of that now. Um, really, really deep penetration, significant. I would say over penetration. Um, and really not that significant of a wound channel to speak of. Next up, however, we shot the 11 and a half inch barrel, which is gonna be here on this side closest to me. And uh, we went about two, two and a half inches before it really started opening up. And I expected more fragmentation to go on here. I really don't see that much fragmentation inside the block. And unfortunately this too also exited the block. Uh, let's try to measure out about 19 inches, it seemed to exit around where the 16 inch blew out the side. Um, so pretty deep penetration, um, deeper than with the 62 grain, which again was surprising, but we have a pretty significant sized permanent wound cavity in here. Um, but that ends right around the 12 inch mark where it entered the second block. And then there's really not much to speak of before it exited the block. So um, honestly, it's much more significant wound pattern with the 62 grain than the 55 grain out of that. Then over here we have the 16 inch barrel and this did something fairly interesting. The other two seemed more or less in line with the blocks. This one again veered up and to the right, 
we have a pretty nice spiral pattern going about five inches, which is a little bit deeper than I'd like to see that start before it starts into the permanent wound cavity. But then we have a very large permanent wound cavity that blew out the side of this block and the side of this block where it entered and then exited out of that end right there. Um, so overall, um, again, you, the, the goal of this is to let you draw the conclusions that you want to draw from these. I'm only giving you the data and adding my commentary to it. Personally, again, the interesting thing I see from both the 62 and the 55 is the 16 inch barrel penetrated pretty deep before starting its permanent wound cavity. And then just based on the permanent wound cavities I'm looking at here, the 62 grain wound cavities are far more significant than the 55 grain wound cavities, which is not what I expected. Again, I expected a lot more fragmentation here than over here. Now, it's worth mentioning that I don't know how these blocks compare to the calibration of other blocks out there, which is why I wanted to shoot all three through all for, through the blocks at the same time. So it's at the same density, the same temperature and everything else um, to give as good apples to apples comparison between the three barrels as possible. Okay, so what you see right here is the 11 and a half inch shooting that Federal soft point ammo. And we have a total depth here of about 10 inches to where the jacket and most of that core is. So 10 inches, getting the type of expansion you would actually hope for, versus shooting it through the seven and a half inch barrel. From the other direction, it penetrated all the way through both blocks, which tells me that these rounds, no matter what round you get, is not designed to deal with the lower velocity of a seven and a half inch barrel. Are there options that are better? Did okay with the 62 grain, but for those of you saying that there are specialty rounds out there like saw points or anything like that, ballistic tip ammo, that ammo is specifically designed for the higher velocity of 16 to 20 inch barrels and is not gonna work the way you want it to out of that seven and a half inch barrel. If you wanna say I'm wrong or show me some ammo that does better, by all means, I encourage that. I would love to see if there's a round out there that works well, but from my testing, it's really, really lackluster compared to everything else. All right, so I'm gonna take this opportunity to kind of wrap up my conclusions about the tests we just did. Um, honestly, in my opinion, it's not worth going down to seven and a half inches. Now you might say, well, hey, I, I wouldn't wanna be shot with a four inch barrel. Yeah, absolutely, you're right. I wouldn't wanna be shot with anything. But just based on the results that I saw today, it makes me very confident in saying that with the seven and a half inch barrel, you're just not getting enough velocity for those rounds to do what they're supposed to do. So with that soft point ammunition, with a seven and a half inch barrel, it passed all the way through 24 inches of gel, which tells me it didn't expand and it didn't slow down. Whereas going only 400 feet per second with that 11 and a half inch barrel, and that's just based on the averages between the ammo that I've seen before with the seven and a half to 11 and a half, um, we only went 10 inches and got pretty good expansion out of that round. That's a pretty significant difference from ice picking through 24 inches to only going 10 inches and getting pretty significant expansion. I even did the same thing with the G2 Research Trident ammo. That Trident ammo went all the way through 24 inches with that uh, seven and a half and we got about 18 to 20 inches with the 11 and a half inch barrel and it actually opened up. So again, is there ammo that could possibly work well out of a lower velocity seven and a half inch barrel? Possibly, but honestly, all the stuff out there is designed around the fast moving bullet. As I said earlier, you're looking at what a 16 inch barrel does at 250 to 300 yards is what you're getting out of that seven and a half inch barrel. So to me, it's just not worth it to give up that extra three inches for length and tacticalness when I can have a 11 and a half inch or even 10.3 inch that's gonna be infinitely more effective as far as terminal ballistics goes. If you guys are convinced that there's a round that'll perform well out of a seven and a half inch barrel, by all means, do the test and send me the results. I'm more than happy to reconsider. But at this point, from everything I've seen, it's just not designed to work well at that low of velocity. So one thing I do plan on doing here in the near future is doing a bunch of different tests through that 11 and a half inch barrel to find out what the best SBR home defense round is. I'm gonna test it not only through the ballistic gelatin, but through drywall and through cinder blocks to see what is the best balance between terminal ballistics and gel, barrier defeating ability through cinder blocks without the over penetration of going through three layers of drywall spaced out like a hallway. Is there anything that'll do that? Um, I kind of doubt it, but I wanna find out for myself. So I got a bunch of good 
um, home defense oriented rounds that we're going to test and see what the results are. So if you want to see that, definitely subscribe to my channel. I got a lot more gel tests coming and have already come out. So definitely stay tuned for those. But anyway, with all that said, as always, I hope you're able to get something out of this video and I really appreciate you watching.